All right, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. It's day 16. We made it. We're over halfway through the 30 day profit challenge. So again, I thank you for making it this far with me. It's been a real fun ride, kind of learning some of the quirks and the ins and outs of the Zoom thing as we move along throughout the day. Hopefully everyone can hear me okay today. We got the mic on, everything's checked off. That's good to go. So thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, it's been uh, 15 days and now 16 of it of uh, going through all these different things related to the profit of your e-commerce business. So hopefully it's been helpful. Hopefully it's been useful for you. I know I've got a lot of charge just out of learning some of the new things that uh, this video recording thing, making sure this is on. So anyways, thanks for being here. Thanks for joining me. And today what we're gonna talk about oh, is we're gonna get into what we call the uh, conversion rates. And conversion rates are something that we talked about yesterday where we looked at the conversion funnel. What we're gonna do is use the conversion rate to actually measure the progress that people are making through your conversion funnel. So without further ado, let's dive into it. I'll start the screen share and we will uh, get rolling with our slides for today. And so conversion rates are what we're going to talk about today for day 16. You know, if you remember yesterday, what we, we went into is we looked at the conversion funnel. And what the conversion funnel is, is just to recap and remind yourself is, think of this as the different stages that people go through in order to reach the end of your checkout flow where they become a customer. And so think about it as all the possible people that are out there in the world that you could potentially be offering your product or your service to and how they make their way through the funnel or through all these different steps down towards becoming a customer. So in this case, you've got visitors that maybe visit any of your web pages. You've got browsers that are visiting a category page or a search results page. You've got shoppers that are maybe hitting a product detail page or think of that like the hang tag on a particular product. You've got buyers that are adding things to cart and showing that intent that they're ready to purchase. You've got spenders who are this close to buying and ready to plunk down their credit card and in the checkout phase. And then finally, you've got customers who are ready and have bought something from you. So in each of these steps, we can look at what we call the, you know, if we looked at it end to end, we would have an overall conversion rate of your customers over your visitors. But there's all sorts of little micro conversions that occur within each of these little steps. And so what we're gonna look at, you know, is kind of there's, you know, you could look at the traffic that converts from a visitor to a browser, that could be one micro conversion. Another version could be when they go from a browser to becoming a shopper. So when they go from viewing a product to actually touching or feeling, or in this case, viewing a page detailing that particular product. And then you could have what we call a product detail to add to cart. So this is the most probably pivotal point is this is where people are starting to make that commitment towards taking it off the shelf and putting it into their cart or into their basket on your website. And then you've got spenders. Spenders are those people that have added it to cart. They're in the checkout aisle. They're ready to buy. And you want to make sure that you're able to close the deal so that at the end of it, you've got people that have completed all the way through the checkout and have then completed an order. So, you know, in each of the next several days, we're going to go through what each of these individual conversion rates look like and give you some tips or tricks in terms of how you might be able to improve those conversion rates. But for now, what today we're going to talk a bit about is the actual overall conversion rate. And again, a conversion rate is something to think about it when we do the math is really just a desired outcome that you have over top of the possible outcome. So in this case, what we're going to talk about today is if we go back to that funnel, what we're talking about is, you know, the overall possible visitors that have reached your website to the total number of customers that could have made it in all the way through to the site. So, you know, these are all individual possibilities, you know, traffic is the sort of possible outcome to the desired outcome of a product view or possible views to desired detail views. And so all these the individual conversion rates are basically what we would call the desired outcome over the possible outcome. And so today what we're going to talk a bit about is just very simply how to calculate your conversion rate overall. And so in this case, what we're talking a bit about is if you take your, all your possible orders over all the possible visits to your site, what that conversion rate would look like. And I've used sort of our typical scenario we've been using of that 4,000 orders, as well as what that would look like in a sort of a, a typical e-commerce benchmark. And so to get 4,000 orders, you're probably gonna need at a minimum around 250,000 visits or people visiting that website or that particular storefront. And that will net you a 1.6% conversion rate. Now, as I mentioned the other day, conversion rates, it doesn't seem like a lot. It seems like, well, wow, there's like 
4% of people that are never buying from you. Well, that's true, but this is looking at it depending on the snapshot of time, but it also just goes to show you that there's lots of opportunity to improve upon that conversion rate. So, you know, you may be thinking to yourself, well, what's my conversion rate? Is it higher? Is it lower than that? If it's higher than that, great. Congratulations. If it's lower than that, great. That's okay. It's, it's, it's whatever your business is at. But what I did is I did a quick bit of research here just to kind of find out what some other conversion rates might look like in different ad industries. And so if we took a look at this graph here, what you're finding is, is and this was from a, from a, a resource called HubSpot that I use for what I call my CRM or my contact relationship management system or tool. And what this is showcasing is, is different e-commerce rates by different ad industries or by different categories in the e-commerce space. So let's, let's kind of take a look a little bit closer at some of these. You know, you've got things like agriculture, which is kind of trending at just over 1%. So, you know, at 1.6, not doing too shabby, not doing too bad. Um, arts and crafts. This is probably one that indexes the highest out of all of these in this sort of study. So that could be anything from selling jewelry to uh, maybe handmade arts, crafts. So there's definitely a lot more following probably with some of those retailers and those brands. Um, baby and child, believe it or not, is the lowest on all this scale here. Um, I know when I was going through being a parent, first time dad at the time, I spent a lot of money online. <laughs> I bought a lot of things for my kid and I still to this day spend a lot of money. In fact, I just bought her some new clothes yesterday because can't seem to be keep it up with how fast she's growing. So, you know, there's a lot of different, that's a pretty broad category of like clothing or kids clothes or kids stuff like strollers or baby seats, whatever you get the picture. So cars and motorcycling, this would be, you know, if there's a lot of automotive parts or aftermarket parts out there for cars and motorbikes. Um, so there's definitely converting in about a one and a half percent range. Uh, electrical and electronic equipment, so or commercial equipment. So this would be probably your typical sort of consumer electronic stores. Um, they're converting pretty high. They're kind of the second largest here and they're about two and a half percent. So even still, if you're buying something, let's say on an Amazon or you're buying something on a Best Buy or whatever, you're still only seeing conversion rates in that sort of two and a half percent range. Uh, fashion, clothing and accessories. So outside of probably kids stuff, you've got fashion accessories here in the sort of one and a quarter range. Food and drink, just below one. Now, food and drink is a newer emerging category, I'd say, in the sort of e-commerce world. Um, you know, a lot of people will still go buy their groceries um, at the grocery store in a lot of cases, but obviously in this day and age, things are moving online where people are able to order their groceries online and pick those up or they're able to buy from some of those brands directly. I think I heard just the other day that Heinz is now selling direct to consumer through Shopify. So, you know, there's, there's, there's lots of brands out there that typically would have gone in the grocery store. They're now starting to go direct to consumer online. You've got health and well-being, so vitamins, maybe uh, any sort of health and fitness equipment or sort of accessories there. You got that kind of almost a 2%. Home accessories and giftware, kind of one and a half. Home and kitchen appliances. You know, I just bought a microwave the other day from Lowe's online. So definitely, uh, you know, there's, there's opportunities there. And then pet care. Next to consumer electronics and arts and crafts, it's kind of the third largest at about two and a half as well. And then finally, you got sports and recreation. So, you know, there's lots of different options, lots of different categories here, lots of different representation here. I think it probably covers the gamut of all the possible different conversion rates across the industry. So let me ask you this question here, and you know, you don't have to answer it in the chat necessarily, but stop and think about it for a second and, and, and ask yourself, well, what is my conversion rate? Do you know what your conversion rate is? If you don't, that's okay. We, you know, we're going to go, we'll go back here and you know, this is how you would calculate it. So what you need to do is go back and take a look at your total orders for the last say 12 months. And let's also then take a look at your total traffic for the last 12 months. Now, if you don't have these numbers readily available in front of you, that's okay. As I mentioned, I'm going to take you through a Google analytics session and we're going to talk a bit about how to calculate your own conversion rates through uh, Google analytics. Okay. So without further ado, that's kind of in a nutshell how we calculate conversion rates. So, you know, over the next couple of days, what we're going to talk through is each of those individual conversion rates that I talked about on this slide here. You know, we're going to go through tomorrow. We'll go through the traffic to product view conversion rate and kind of some tips and tricks there. Then we'll talk in the next day about product views to product details and sort of what those pages look like and some of the tips and tricks there. Then we'll get into product detail and add to cart and sort of what are some uh, options there to get people more motivated to add to cart. 
and, and also what I was going to mention in each of these cases, I'll try to do show you case some other benchmarking so that you can have a reference point to know, okay, well, how am I doing in comparison to some of these other benchmarks, okay? And then we'll look at add to cart to checkout and then finally check out to order. So over the next few days, we're gonna go through the rest of the conversion funnel and we'll look at what each of those, what we call micro conversions look like on each of the steps. So with that, that's it. That's today's lesson. I really thank you for being here. Thanks again for, for making the time with me. Again, congratulations on making it over the halfway point. We're over the hump and the finish line is in sight. We can see it in front of us. So thanks again for watching. And today I ask you again to be present connect with others, and if you get a chance, try to make an impact in someone's life. Thanks for watching, and I'll pause the, the recording now and uh, take any questions. And I realize that uh, they might be popping up on my other screen here, so. Perfect, so we have a few conversion rates shared with us. That's awesome to see. Some people are higher and lower than some of these benchmarks. So that's awesome, that's really good to see. So question would anyone got today? Just put them in the chat window and I will uh, try my best to answer them for you. Meanwhile, I'll take a sip of my coffee. So either conversion rates are really stumping people or really, really are um, all over the place for people or maybe they don't know. So. You know, a question came up, why is the conversion rate vary so much by industry? Well, there's, it's a good question. Um, you know, the, there's, there's a lot of reasons why. I mean, I'll give you my two cents or my take on it. I think a lot of it goes back to the ability for people to, the, the amount of people that are actually, I think one factor is, is the amount of people that are actually selling products in that particular category. If you look at that arts and crafts one that was kind of skewed way so high, I mean, there's a whole marketplace with a, a platform called Etsy that a lot of people may be familiar with that has really empowered that industry and made it super easy for artisans and craft makers and inventors to take their, their product or whatever they've got and put it on a platform that a lot of people are already buying from. And so you look at something like an Etsy or even like, a, like, like an Amazon, you've got what we call those marketplace or those network effects where people are already accustomed to going and buying from there or shopping from there. And then they're going to visit the individual retailer or the individual brand to buy their product and service. It's the same concept of a shopping mall, right? If you think about a little retailer, I mean, you probably found in your shopping days, you know, the, 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 the brands that are getting the most success and most traction probably are the ones that are already showcased along other side brands. So that's why they came up with shopping malls or strip malls is so that if you had your own little shop on the street corner in the middle of nowhere, you know, unless you're getting foot traffic coming by already for all those other things, it's going to be a lot more difficult to make those people come in and buy from you. And so if you're already kind of sitting in a place where there's people already coming to buy from other stores and shops, maybe that curiosity would be like, well, well, Hey, I'm going to go shop over there. So the same I think would apply to sort of arts and crafts um, as well as some of those other ones like consumer electronics. I think that it also goes back to the nature of the product itself. So um, a lot of those products that you're seeing the skew a little bit higher are products that you're probably not likely to return or something that you're okay buying online. You don't need to go try it on. Like I think you saw clothing way towards the more lower end. Clothing, I think is still a tricky one because people need to get the size right and the fit right. Excuse me, and as we talked about with returns, um, you know, people are, are more likely to return probably clothing than they are any other particular product there because it's fit not right or the size isn't correct or, you know, maybe they buy two of something and they know they're going to return one back. So I think there's a few different factors, I think, as well. It's just the, the overall um, ability for people to buy. Like food and drink is, again, one of them that's kind of really low there that we saw. I think food and drink is one that's, that's going to be up and coming and maybe over time. I think it just becomes part of buying behaviors and buying habits as well, that people are used to buying those things online or maybe just takes time over time. So lots of different ways why, reasons why, but I think it was a really good question. That's just my two, two cents on it. But um, there's probably other reasons why too, that it varies so much region by region. Good question. Sorry. A little sneeze. Right. So another questions I can answer for people today. Well, no, if there's no other questions, I thank you again for being here today. I'll give it another couple seconds. 
But otherwise, um, you know, really appreciate you being here today. Again, tomorrow we'll start getting into a little bit more in the conversion funnel. We'll look at e-commerce conversion rate for turning those visitors into browsers and what are some of the opportunities there. And then we'll continue to work our way down the conversion funnel until we get to the bottom. And then next week, we will get to the customer margin. And that's the most probably important part because if you don't have customers, you don't have a business. So, you know, with that, thanks again for watching today and we'll be in touch tomorrow. Thanks and have a great day.